Hi, good morning, happy Thursday. Uh, I'm Sarah Smith, I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens. And if you're tuning in on Thursday, watching the live stream, we are usually talking about the plant of the week uh, and I'm usually hosting that for you. So uh, today's plant of the week is the ice cap rose. Uh, so we're always gonna try to bring you something new, something fun, something different, um, something unique here to Rogers Gardens. Um, and the ice cap rose is an absolutely beautiful rose. Uh, it's something you're seeing new, more new here on the market. It's not something we've carried for a very long time. Uh, but the beauty about this rose is first off, it's a beauty, uh, but it's a nice, really pretty small flower. So I brought a really nice, healthy, fresh uh, rose for you to see here. This is the ice cap rose. Uh, it's got some new bo uh, blooms coming on and a couple of new stuff up here, but you can just see how nice. It's very, very small in the leaf, but it's not a miniature rose. It's actually a full-size rose, uh, but kind of a miniature sort of look to it, which is really cool. Uh, but then I picked some flowers so you can see how great these are. And if you are into floral arranging at home or you grow roses, and it's something uh, that you're really kind of starting to bring more stuff in. I'm really finding that a lot of uh, the rose growers are starting to actually now anymore actually bring the roses into the house, which I think is pretty amazing. And what we should have been doing all the time, right? So if you haven't, this is a good one to add into your collection. Look how pretty these are. They're nice, beautiful, tiny little rose. They're like a spray rose that you can actually grow at home. So any of you florist people know spray roses. Uh, it's a nice kind of filler rose. Uh, but this is a really great one. Being white, it's pretty unique universal for everything. It's got about a 30 count petal on it, uh, but look how pretty this is. Isn't this great? So I've been doing a lot of um, cutting flowers, especially dahlias. My dahlias are really starting to come into bloom right now. And I always interplant dahlias between my roses and I'm starting to cut all my new roses, cut all the new dahlias, bring them in. Uh, and I've been really kind of thinking about the fact that I would love to have some kind of filler to go in there. Um, and I don't really have anything necessarily that's like a true filler. Uh, I just wind up when I'm walking around and seeing the new stuff coming in, the things that are bold and exciting, it's like, oh yes, and I grab those and then I cut it and it kind of makes it less special because that's kind of all I've got. Big, fat dinner plate dahlias, big, fat, beautiful roses. Um, and I'm starting to kind of realize that for cutting purposes, I want to start having some smaller stuff in the garden to work really well as a filler. Uh, so uh, when we got the dahlias in, the bulbs in, I started getting the little round pom-pom dahlias uh, because I want to start having that as a filler. And when these ice, or sorry, ice cap roses started coming in, um, I started realizing how great for an actual spray rose as a filler. Uh, so they're just really fantastic for that, but they're a nice full-size rose. They're not a little tiny rose. Uh, so I really, really love uh, the idea of using this one as a filler rose. So even here at work when we're starting to deadhead stuff and kind of collecting up uh, some of the stuff that we have that's our trash flowers, uh, putting them together. I love putting the spray roses in there, these little uh, ice cap roses. Um, the other really cool thing is a lot of people have ice Iceberg roses. Iceberg roses are super, super popular here. Nice big white rose. Uh, they're very, very um, tolerant to mildew uh, and things like that. They're very, very drought tolerant too, which is pretty cool. So we'll get into that in a second. But this is a great complement to that because it's um, a smaller little flower. So if you're doing multiple layers and you want to do two layers of roses, this is a really good one for that because very uh, good match color wise. Um, not all whites are created equal. You know, some whites are a little bit more yellow some whites are a little bit more pinky. Uh, these ones match the iceberg roses almost identically. And I love the iceberg and ice cap. How cute is that? So the big one is the berg and the little one is the cap. Uh, but this one works really well in conjunction with that. So if you're doing multiple roses and you're doing one of those white and green gardens, this is a really, really good addition to that. Uh, they're just so uh, pretty and so nice. I mean, look at how adorable that one is. That's going on my hat when we're done. <laughs> um, but the great thing about these is these are a very uh, low maintenance rose, very similar to the iceberg roses. So they don't have a lot of problems with powdery mildew. You're hardly gonna have any issues with rust and things. Of course, it's gonna depend on how well you care for your rose. The better your rose is cared for, uh, the more resilient it is to bugs and pests and diseases and things like that. And um, I will get into that in a second too. But the nice thing is, is roses are very, very drought tolerant. So as 
we all know we're uh, kind of working our way into water restrictions. If you're in LA County, you're already there. Um, Orange County hasn't been officially uh, called out yet, but uh, roses are actually very, very drought tolerant. They're very deep rooted. Um, and if you water them very deeply and water them infrequently, uh, you definitely build your way into a drought tolerant um, garden. So I have mine planted with my dahlias and you would look at that area and think this is something that requires a lot of water. Look how fussy that is. Everybody just assumes roses are fussy and very water hungry, but they're actually not. Roses grow great out in the desert. Uh, my grandfather out in the desert used to grow roses all the time. Uh, and it was something he only really watered once or twice a week. So if you're watering your rose really, really deeply, but infrequently, uh, and you're getting those roots nice and deep, they become very, very drought tolerant. So it's a really great addition to a garden for that. So drought tolerant does not always have to mean succulents. Uh, you could definitely get away with a cottagey garden uh, with a couple of little tweaks and changes to your irrigation, adding some mulch and things like that, and picking out some of the stuff that was a little water hungry and start putting in things that are a little less water hungry. But you can definitely have a really beautiful cottagey kind of garden. You can have a really uh, beautiful kind of uh, English side, French side kind of Tuscany style garden and still be very drought tolerant and roses work really well with that especially a rose like this that doesn't require a lot of water uh, so this would be a really great addition to that garden um, all roses want to be in full sun so all roses really require a good amount of sun and this one's a little shade tolerant but that doesn't mean it's super shade tolerant the more shade you have your roses in uh, the more they're gonna struggle so you're looking for about six hours at the very, very least. This one will grow in a pot. You just want to make sure it's in a big enough pot. Um, and you want to make sure that you're really feeding them well. So on top of getting them established and getting them watered deeply, so those, ro those roots start to go down, down, down deep in the soil, the deeper the roots are in the soil, the less water it's going to need. Uh, so that key is, is huge, is getting that those roots going down. But you want to make sure that you're keeping it well fertilized. Um, this is the rose fertilizer that I absolutely love. I use this rose fertilizer at home. Uh, I use this once a month. Um, I do a fourth of a cup to a cup per rose um, for my larger roses, my um, climbing roses, my uh, our, my patio tree roses, uh, I do about a half of a cup to even three fourths of a cup. Um, and I do it monthly and I just always do it the first of the month. That way I don't forget. Right. Uh, and it's really nice because it's, uh, just a powder that you just throw straight on the ground and you just watered it. No need to mix it in. No need to stir it in. No need to mix it with water, uh, down to earth, all organic. I absolutely love this. Um, but the thing that I love in addition to it, and if you watch any of my live streams, you know that I talk about this one all the time, the compost tea, the Malibu compost tea. This stuff is fantastic. This is not a replacement to your fertilizer, however. You're gonna use both things together. So this one I use monthly, this one I actually use bi-monthly. You could use it monthly, your garden's gonna look fantastic. Most of my roses I have planted in front of the bedroom window and I don't want them uh, to take over that whole entire window and cut the light off. Uh, so I actually only use this one every other month, but this is just um, a little tea bag inside here. You throw it in a five gallon bucket of water, you let it sit overnight, and then you use that water uh, to water in your fertilizer. So then that way you're getting all those things out of the way um, all at one time. But it just looks like this and it's something that you just soak overnight. You can use this as a foliar spray too, uh, which is kind of cool. So uh, the roses will actually take the nutrients in uh, through the leaves as well. Um, so I do it both ways. Typically though, because I have a lot of roses and I have a lot of stuff in my garden, I usually just use it as something I put down on the soil because I like to do it easy. Um, but yeah, that's a really, really fantastic thing. When I started using both of those things, I had way less problem with powdery mildew and things like that. And I live super coastal. Uh, it was an issue I was having all the time. Uh, so once I switched over to that and I really got uh, the health of my roses improved, I had way less problems. So it's really kind of amazing. Just like with people, the better we treat ourselves, the better we eat, the more hydrated we are, the better we are uh, to fight off, you know, colds and bugs and all kinds of things like that, right? So same thing with your roses. Um, however, this is something that I always have in stock. So this is um, something I think all gardeners should have in their arsenal. This is a really fantastic product. Uh, this is the Safer Brand Rose 3-in-1 Spray. Um, so what this has in it is it has insecticidal soap and it has sulfur in it as well. So the insecticidal soap works really well on all those little sap sucking kind of bugs like 
aphids and white fly and mealy bug and things like that. Uh, it's really, really mild, which is nice. So you don't have to worry about it harming any of the beneficial bugs. Um, and it's something you just spray on the bugs um, when you see them on the tips of any of the new kind of growth. So um, just spray it right away. Usually want to do it about every seven to 10 days if you're starting to see bugs until you don't see the bugs anymore. You just got to break through the cycle. Usually one spray is not going to be enough because you're going to leave a handful and they're going to breed and your uh, bugs are going to have an outbreak all over again. So you do need to make sure that you don't just spray it one time. That's usually not enough. Um, but I really like that this also has the sulfur spray in it. So the sulfur spray works really well for things like powdery mildew, rust, and black spot. Uh, so this is a really great thing to have for that as well. So I really like that this is kind of a two for one sort of thing. It says three in one because it also works on mites, but it's the insecticidal soap in there. So it's really two active ingredients, but it controls mites as well. Um, which is really fantastic. So this is a great thing to have if you have roses. Really for any kind of plant, I use this on my tomatoes and stuff as well because I am so coastal. I do till, still tend to get some powdery mildew on uh, my tomatoes, but my roses are actually pretty good because I'm feeding them so nicely uh, and I take such good care of them. They're so pampered uh, that they don't tend to have problems, which is really fantastic. So this is a great thing to have um, in your back pocket as well. Um, and then mulching. This is a really good time to mulch. I'm going to say if you've got a garden, anything at all, if you don't have roses, put some mulch down. This will really help so you can cut back your water. You're going to add that nice insulated layer uh, to the top of your soil. First, it's going to look beautiful. It looks very nice and finished, uh, keeps the weeds down and also keeps so you have to water a lot less because it's going to keep the soil nice and cool and moist underneath the mulch. So uh, this is a really good time to start adding mulch to your garden. Any space where you see some open soil, add some mulch to that. Um, mulch up underneath your plants. Just don't get it too thick underneath your plants because you can uh, kind of suffocate out your plants so don't go crazy heavy-handed uh, but it's a really really great thing to add into a garden uh, to make it look nice but to also help with some of that water conservation as well so um, ice cap our rose of the week uh, and our plant of the week here at Rogers um, it's such a great versatile uh, plant I absolutely love it and it's just so beautiful right so we of course are live if you have any questions um, go ahead and throw those questions down below and I'll answer those for you if you came in late Still put your questions down there. We'll still answer those questions for you uh, because we will post this later uh, to our Facebook and to our Instagram page so we can keep answering those questions for you as well. And if you've got any friends who are like those rose crazy people or you know someone who's constantly cutting in and bringing roses into the office, you know those people. <laughs> I'm one of those here. I bring all my roses in here too all the time. Um, let them know. You need to start adding some beautiful little kind of filler roses, something beautiful like a spray rose like this. It's a really great addition to that garden. All right. So do we have any questions yeah yes um do they have a lot of thorns um they're not crazy thorn heavy um you can kind of see on this uh bigger more mature piece it's just a couple of really big thorns uh it's not like a crazy heavy thorned one what i really like is once you actually get up into this part into the spray part they don't um the smaller growth has some like little tiny things but it's not particularly thorn heavy very similar to the thorns that you would get on an iceberg rose so it's not one of those ones like some of those david austins oh my goodness when i cut those i'm just like ripping up my hands if you look at my hands right now i'm totally all cut up from <laughs> all the rose cutting and trimming and uh uh, bouquet making I've been doing but this one is not crazy thorny which is really fantastic so yeah um and then I'll make sure when you come in oh we do have one more question yeah let's go for it do you carry Eleanor's F or VF11 hmm I'm not sure what that is so uh, that'll be saved down into the questions down below. So I'll look into that and see what that is. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Um, but yeah, make sure that you come in, take a look at our roses. We have a great selection right now. Uh, we still have quite a few of the uh, Princess Charlene de Monaco's, which is our rose of the year for this year. Uh, beautiful rose. It was uh, one of the roses used primarily in all my Easter arranging this year. Just so, so pretty. So, so just blushy and fantastic. Uh, we still have uh, 
uh, quite a few of the Disneyland roses. Uh, it's definitely dwindling down though. The amount that we have is definitely less and less and less. So if you've got one of those Disney people in your life, uh, get them one of those Disney roses uh, because we will eventually sell out and we won't have any more of those. But I just walked through and there's, there's a handful down there still. Um, and then these ice caps, these absolutely beautiful ice caps. Make sure you come and take a look at those. If you need a filler rose, this is the rose for you because it'll work with everything, which is super fantastic. So thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you haven't signed up for our email list, go sign up for that email list. You'll know about all the fun things that are coming up here in the garden, all the really fantastic programs that we have going on. Um, we're going to have a hummingbird summer program again this year, which is really, really fun. And I feel like the hummingbirds already got the notice because they're starting to come in every morning. I'm seeing more and more hummingbirds, uh, but we're getting more and more hummingbird attracting plants uh, here at the nursery. Uh, the hummingbird feeders are starting to come in. I'm seeing all those beautiful glass feeders, uh, which is really fun and exciting. Uh, so make sure you come in for that, but sign up for that email list so you know what's going on. We always have fun specials happening here at Rogers, so you'll be the first one to know and you won't find out too late. I can't tell you how many people are like, oh, I heard that you were doing this. And I'm like, yeah, it's gone already because <laughs> stuff goes really, really quickly. So make sure you sign up for that email list. Uh, if you have any friends that are really into cutting roses and do a lot of rose growing, make sure that you tag them down below uh, so they know what's going on and that we've got these really fun, pretty ice cap roses in here at Rogers. Um, and then make sure you go check out our YouTube page. There's all kinds of fun stuff on that YouTube page. There's stuff stored on there from years and years ago. So if you've got a question, we have a video about it. I guarantee it. So make sure you check that out as well. Uh, Memorial Day is coming up. So it's really a fun time here at the nursery. We're starting to actually get into that kind of mode of being outside and enjoying the outside. Although we still definitely have that June gloom thing going on here which is kind of funny. So I'm like ready for summer, but then I'm like, oh, it's very cold still. So um, yes, but make sure you check that out as well. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. We do these live streams every Tuesday and Thursday. So lots of information here for you here at Rogers Gardens and be well and be safe and happy gardening. Bye.